Okay, thanks so much, Sky, for the brief introduction. So, my name is Luke here. I've been in the IT field for, uh, since 2013, actually, I started my first IT job in 2013. I've been studying IT for the past four years before that as well. So, when we look at IT as, as a whole, all right, not many people understand what IT can do. And of course, within the field of IT, what can we do as well? All right, that's why we are here today to understand what are the emerging technologies in the IT field because there's actually a lot of portion that you can venture into for IT environment. When we talk about IT, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? A lot of people will just think, oh, IT is just about fixing computers. IT is just about uh, writing programming codes and so on. That's the more general view of uh, IT as a whole. But let's get, get, get a clearer view as well. Yep, like I mentioned, uh, fixing computers and programming as well. Let's get a brief understanding from Gabby and Sky here as they come from different background. Uh, Gabby from chemical engineering, Sky from an IT graduate. So Gabby, when we talk about IT, what's the first thing that comes to your mind before you join InfoSight as a company to become an IT trainer yourself? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word IT? Actually, before I joined the IT line, uh, for me, I think that IT guys are all about fixing computers and then, you know, fixing other people. If they are facing the internet problems, then they have to fix it. And then I never know about they're actually server engineer, there's a network engineer, there's a storage engineer. I, I never know about that before, before I actually joined the IT line. Yeah. So how about Sky? Okay. So I'm a fresh grad that recently graduated from IT. Okay, but however, the term storage engineer, uh, server engineer, of course I've heard of network engineers. I know what they do, but I don't really know what they do do. Okay? So my knowledge on the job environment of the IT world during that time was very, very scarce. Right. So in uni, we were mostly taught on programming web development, and some data management, okay? So for students to be exposed to the latest technology, they will actually have to discover it by themselves. So this is my viewpoint of IT. All right. So as you can see, the general overview is more towards yep, programming, fixing computers, and so on. Even for my part, when I study, uh, I have a degree in applied computing. So mainly what I do back then was just writing programming, coding, and so on. A bit of mobile development, because uh, back in 2012, 2011, I think mobile development was the emerging technology trend as well. That's where the trend was heading towards back then. All right. So in, in my mind, it's all about programming, writing codes, and that's it. That's, that's actually something I, I was good with as well back then. All right. But when I first look, started looking for a job as well, I, I started off with my first company uh, uh, back then. My first job title was pre-sales engineer. All right, I did not know what, what the job scope was and so on. I was just applying here and there just to see what I could get and so on. Uh, mainly, of course, I was looking for programming jobs uh, and just trying out in different IT environments. So when I encountered this title pre-sales engineer, all right, I have no idea what I'm actually venturing myself into. So that's where I learned. For example, pre-sales engineer, what we do here is we are, we are part of a sales team. We are also part of a technical team as well. We are basically pitching a sales pitch based on technical presentation. So that's when I learned in the field of IT, you can, there's actually a lot of roles that you can look into, not just programming. You can be a technical person. Yes, there's, a pre, there's even a sales portion for it as well. And there's actually many more. So for anyone who are venturing into IT, if you're looking at IT as a career and so on, you might be confused as to, oh, where do I start? All right. So even for my degree itself, to me right now, from what, what, what I've learned back then, those are just a skill set to help equip myself to go into the IT career. There's so many skill sets that you can pick up. All right. But where do you start? That's where our webinar today we're going to look into. What are the emerging technologies in current days? So. Uh, I'm sure most of you might have heard of Gartner before. Gartner, they have Magic Quadrant to show you who are the best company in certain environments and so on. But yes, as you can see here, Gartner also has this chart here called a hype cycle. They have hype cycle for various environments. They have hype cycle for like data management and so on. But here today, we're going to look at hype cycle for emerging technologies. So what it shows here is within this hype cycle, they'll show you 
what are the up and coming technologies in the next two to five years time as well and even up to 10 years all right so let's take a look at emerging technologies back five years ago in 2017 all right in 2017 let's look at the bottom side we start there's a lot of technologies and they are up and coming but within all of this here we're going to focus on one environment which is being repetitive within the next few years as well the topic that we're looking here is artificial intelligence or short form of course it's no more as ai so you can see even back in 2017 ai has already been in the hype cycle we start with artificial general intelligence the, here they shown all right yep it might take more than 10 years for them to trigger that's that's the point you were looking out more than 10 years just to trigger the start of ai but if you look further up as well all right we have more than that we have I, iot platform uh, internet of things platform as well then we have stuff like deep learning and machine learning these are up and coming within two to five years time we will learn more about this later on but just to show you what we have in the hype cycle all right and you can see we even have blockchain here in 2017 all right blockchain is most popular in cryptocurrency so where where, where is cryptocurrency at right now cryptocurrency has exploded in terms of the market size and so on bitcoin has gone up to fifty thousand us dollar per coin and so on you can just see how the market has evolved like that all right and if we move forward to the following year 2018 all right you will see the repetitive item again comes back up ai general uh, artificial general intelligence but now we're looking into more details as well it's no longer just general ai we're moving into a deeper portion we have h ai we have uh again ai platform as a service uh then we have I iot platform again you can see where the trends are moving towards this few similar item ai and iot as well internet of things now let's have a look at 2019 as well so we're moving nearer and nearer this is two years past already okay so here very simple white dot basically uh more than 10 years and so on yellow dots is just five to ten years so where are we moving towards ai right here all right we can see now we are really going into a deep dive portion of ai now we have adaptive machine learning we slightly higher we have even emotional ai as well then we have explainable ai h ai and so on there's more and more ai technologies from one general ai now we are branching out to multiple parts of ai as well so let's just move on continue to look at 2020 as well as you can see again within the next two to five years time what do we have all right so we do have ai augmented design that's one of them if we go slightly higher same thing adaptive machine learning generative ai composite ai and so on as well we even have responsible ai explainable ai you can just see how much it has branched out okay we're no longer just looking at one path from one ai path we can move towards multiple path itself and for one last one from last year as well yes same thing everything has been repeated here so you can see from 2017 we have a 10 years uh up and coming technology now five years has reached where are we right now within ai there's many more technologies that are coming up we are actually already in the digital era where a lot of our environment has either integrated a small portion of ai or they are using it as a whole as well to run a full automated system here okay so you can see here from this chart here yes we have ai uh, augmented design again uh, we have physics informed AI slightly higher. We can see uh, we got generative AI. Those are same thing as well. And even uh, last year and this year, I think uh, I'm sure most of you have heard of uh, NFT as well, right? A lot of people are still confused. What are NFT? People can just sell a piece of art for millions of dollars just from non fungible tokens as well. So you can see these are up and coming technologies here. So as a person who is new to IT, where do we want to venture? When you want to venture into IT, where are we supposed to start? All right what type of skill set do you want to equip yourself with do you want to equip yourself with programming languages do you want to go with technology learn more about blockchain learn more about ai learn more about nfts for example okay as you can see that what we're showing here is ai is definitely one of the trends that will continue for the next few years to come as well in five to ten years as well so now one of, one very very important question here is what is ai what is artificial intelligence so we have Gabby here today with us as well. Gabby is an AI trainer here. She will explain in, uh, in further as well, what is AI to a person who has no IT knowledge or maybe not even artificial intelligence knowledge as well. For someone who is new, we will learn a bit more uh, about what is artificial intelligence and how we can apply it or just some short scenarios here. All right, Gabby, over to you. Thank you, Leo. 
So uh, artificial intelligence, or maybe just in short, the AI, is actually very simple. Right? You can think of it as like uh, it is one thing that we want to use to simulate the human intelligence into the machine. Right? Uh, so if you know about the human intelligence, uh, according to one of the very famous uh, American psychologists, uh, the name is Howard Gardner. So he said that a human intelligence can actually be classified into seven categories. So there's a uh, you know visual intelligence, there's a linguistic intelligence, there's a verbal intelligence. So there are seven categories of it. So one of the examples here of the human intelligence is the uh, as I mentioned the linguistic intelligence. All right. Uh, so. Linguistic intelligence is the intelligence that can allow us as a human to be able to, you know, understand speech and then able to express ourselves. We are be, will be able to express our own ideas using the right words. So since, uh, as I mentioned, so AI is to simulate the human intelligence into the machine. So one of the example of this is that we can simulate the linguistic intelligence into the machine so that the machine can also identify speech and also responds with the right words, just like how human will do. Right, for example, the Apple Siri, Microsoft Cortana, and etc. So this is one of the example. Or maybe you can also look into the other example here, which is the uh, visual intelligence. So uh, the visual intelligence is, uh, is one of the intelligence of humans that can allow humans like us, uh, we are able to perceive the environment. And then from what we perceive, we'll be able to identify the object nearby us. Right? For example, now I can see that there's a laptop in front of me. I can see that uh, you know, on, on my right-hand side, there's a cup and so on. So I'll be able to use this visual intelligence to identify the object near me. Okay, so when this visual intelligence of human can be stimulated into the machine, we can actually build a system like uh, what you can see from here, the autonomous vehicles, which has the capability to identify the root condition right, by seeing through the smart cameras and drive safely on the route. So that is basically a very brief introduction about what is AI. All right, uh, just in short, AI is to uh, simulate the human intelligence into machine. Okay, so that is the uh, AI. So when we talk about the AI, so uh, one of the very popular terms that you might heard about is the machine learning. So if you heard about machine learning before, you might also wonder what is the relationship between the machine learning and the AI. Uh, you might be, you know, confusing. Uh, maybe you might think that AI is equal to machine learning, machine learning is equal to AI. But I would say uh, machine learning is actually not equal to AI, but it is just one of the tools that we can use to build the AI system. It is not the same level as the AI, but it is a subset of AI. So what machine learning will do is that now we will need to look into one of the very important concepts here, which is the decision making system. All right. Uh, so before we look into the, you know, the idea of machine learning, so maybe we can to, uh, we need to understand first about this uh, decision making system. So we as a human, yeah, uh, we are using our intelligence to make tons of decision every single day, and for every decision that we make, yeah, we are making it based on our own decision making system. For example. Uh, if we want to decide whether this animal is a cat or not, so what will we do? Right? Uh, so first, of course, we will ask our decision-making system. Right? Uh, we will try to examine whether this animal has the ear like this or not, whether this animal has four legs or not, whether this animal has uh, this kind of eyes or the tail. Uh, then we will only make a conclusion to say that this is a cat. So we as a human, we will always have our own decision making system, which is actually a set of rules to be referred before we can actually make any decision. All right. So, but of course, not only just to identify uh, something, but we as a human, if we want to make a action, we want to make an action, or maybe for example, we want to win a basketball game. All right, and uh, we will also need to refer to our decision making system to decide uh, which is the best action to be made in every different scenario in the game in order to win the game. 
right? Uh, for example, maybe uh, when a situation is like this, somebody is blocking me from going near to the basket. So then uh, the decision that I have to make is that maybe I need to turn my body a little bit and then maybe I need to go to the right by two steps and et cetera in order to escape from that person who is blocking me. Right? Or maybe there's another, another scenario where I need to make a shot at the position maybe three feet away from the basket. Then the decision that I have to make in order to make a good shot is that maybe I need to bend my knee a little bit and then maybe I need to raise the ball and then use a suitable amount of force and then the right angle of 40 degrees to throw the ball. Only then I can make a successful shot. So you see, we are actually doing a lot of decision every day, right? And it will be all based on the decision making system that we learn here. So why do I need to tell you about the decision making system is that now machine learning is a study of a model or algorithms that formulate the rules for the machine. In machine learning, we want this model, machine learning model, to learn the decision-making system. Right, we as a human, all right, how can we derive our decision-making system? All right, we learn from our experience because every day we are going through different things, right? We are going through different events. So from day to day, from time to time, we are gaining experience. So the more experience that we can gain, the better will be the decision-making rules that we can derive. And when we have a better decision rules, so the better decision we can make. Uh, so that will be how we as a human, we can derive our own rules. So in machine learning process, we want to train this machine learning model with the data. So the data is like the experience to human. Right? And we will need to fit good data to the model so that the model will also come up with its own rules. Right? The machine learning model will also try to derive the good rules from the data so that later on, when they need to do the, make some decisions or make some predictions, so they will be referring back to their decision-making system so to give us a good prediction. Right? So that is basically machine learning process. We are going to train the model to derive a good decision-making system up from the data. So that will be, uh, why am I uh, explaining this uh, decision-making system to you? So maybe uh, one last example here. So if we want to train a machine that can cheer up a goal, right? let's say the goal of the machine is to cheer up a goal. So how can this machine know what are the better steps to be taken in order to achieve that goal? All right, so now definitely we'll need to train the machine so that it can derive its own rule-making system. So during this machine learning process or so-called the training process, different kind of the information can be perceived by the machine. For example, uh, maybe if the robot uh, tries to give a snack to the girl, or the girl will be very unhappy. If the robot gives flowers to the girl, uh, the girl will be very happy. And maybe if the robot gives the girl some money, uh, so the girl will be even more happy. So based on every data information here, the machine will update its own rule-making system so that it will remember what should be done and what should not be done. Okay? Uh, so after a proper training here, the machine will get its final rule-making system, all right, which it will then refer if the go. Right? So it will refer back to the to this uh, so-called the data mapping system that it learned uh, during the machine learning training just now. All right, so that will be the example right here. But of course, uh, the machine learning, as I mentioned, it will be just one of the subset of the artificial intelligence. It is just one part of the AI. So we can think of the machine learning model is just like the brand of our AI system. Well, to obtain a complete functional AI system, we need to still get some other components like the sensors, or maybe we need to still get some uh, smart cameras or Internet of Things to act as the hand or other parts of the AI model that can collect data and maybe help us display the result from the model processing. Right? So for example, and of course, uh, since that we say AI system often need to process a huge volume of the data, especially in a single short time. 
So it is also very important that we can learn about big data because big data will ensure that all these uh, processing of the machine, a massive amount of data can be completed in the required time. So uh, for the big data and for the LT part, I will, I think I will let you to have a further explanation to you because uh, he's actually an expert uh, in this field here, big data and also LT. So I think I will pass the floor back to you, Luke. All right. Thanks a lot, Gabby. So thanks for the short and brief explanation about AI. So we learned a little bit about what AI is right now. So from uh, the explanation from Gabby, we know AI is just a small portion for you to do processing of a data. We're setting a preset rule so that our machine will be able to be able to process the data and know what to do next. So as a human, we have a brain to do that. As a machine, a machine doesn't have a brain to do that. What, what does the machine need to do to be able to learn? We set a preset rule, all right? One plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four, for example. Now, where do we get the rules being set and where do we collect all this data as well? Okay, that's where IoT comes in, all right? IoT will act as your hand, your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your mouth and so on. So you'll be able to hear, feel, taste, and smell and everything, okay? so. Like, like we mentioned earlier as well, AI is just one small subset. You can build up an entire full ecosystem to run what we call a full automated item as well. That's where you will get IoT, Internet of Things in, AI, artificial intelligence, and a big data to run. Why are these three items, uh, why do they work so well together? All right, very simple. IoT, just a brief explanation on what these three can do here. IoT is responsible for collecting data. Your hand, your eyes, and so on, I'm collecting data. I'm feeling, I'm seeing, I'm smelling, and so on. Now, AI will be processing all this data as well. Oh, I'm holding a cup of hot water. I'm uh, showering in cold water, for example. All right, oh, I see my favorite food. I smell my favorite food, for example. AI is helping you to process. It's like your brain is processing, all right? I understand what are the objects that I have here that are being collected from my IoT devices. Now, big data will help you to analyze all of this as well. All right, you might see your favorite food. Oh, I'm happy. Uh, you see your favorite food, you like it. All right, AI help you to process. That's your, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's a bowl of noodle. That's a uh, plate of chicken rice, for example. All right, maybe that's some of your favorite food. AI will only tell you this is a plate of chicken rice. All right, AI will tell you, yeah, these are vegetable, this is steak. Your brain, of course, you will analyze based on past experience that you have experienced. Oh. Luke doesn't like vegetable. Okay, this is vegetable, avoid. Oh, this is steak and so on. Yes, let's go for it. Okay, so with that amount of data, like Gabby mentioned, when we have a lot of data being gathered, how will our human brain won't be able to process all of it at once as well, all right? Well, how do we study for exam? We try to memorize, memorize, memorize. By repetition, when we have so much data, we try to memorize and try to repeat and so on as well. So the way to go through with this is, of course, big data will help you to be able to analyze, to help you to make a, informed decision as well okay so one more example that i can give here is you just imagine in an e-commerce environment all right in malaysia we have shopee and lazada correct so how do you think shopee and lazada do their advertising whenever a new user sign up for shopee and lazada what would you see in the very first page once you log in and so on they'll usually show you what are the uh, up and coming uh, products or what are the products that are popular as well so where do they get all of this information these are all based on, for example, user clicks, all right? Shopee and Lazada, I believe they have millions of users every month and so on, all right? Especially they have monthly promotion, they might have even higher. So whenever any user click on certain items, these are where they generate data. One click equals one data, all right? Once, I, once you click into IT products, all right, IT products get one point. You click into kitchenware, you get, click into household item, or you click into any item, every individual system will get one point. That's where IoT will be collecting. Now, AI will be processing it, all right? One point is higher than the other. Second point is higher than uh, the third one and so on. So they will be able to analyze which product has a higher click and so on, higher view wage, or even higher uh, product being sold as well. So once you process here, now big data can come in to help you to do a precision marketing right here. They can do a more precise advertising towards targeted user. Oh, Yes, I have 10 products here. All 10 products are uh, top selling product, but they're from different backgrounds. Some can be uh, technology, some can be sports equipment, some can be a kitchen uh, item, some can be clothing brands and so on. 
So how do I know what item does Luke like? So that's where they will analyze, oh, what are Luke's past uh, item purchase or item view and so on. All right, mainly based on IT technology. So when I promote my top 10 items, I only promote 10 IT products to Luke, for example. Okay, so when you have all of these items together, just remember, IoT will help you to collect your data. It's like your arms, your eyes, and so on, to help you to collect. AI is like your brain to help you to process. Okay, this is a cup of hot water. This is a, a cup of cold water. All right, that's your favorite food. This is your least favorite food, for example. They'll just help you to process what are the items. Then, of course, to make a decision, same thing again. Once you analyze, oh, this is a vegetable. Sorry, Luke doesn't like vegetable. Pass. Oh, this is a steak, a piece of steak and so on. Yes, Luke loves steak. Bring it to me. So that's where you can have a full autonomous system to help you to gather your data, to process it, and to analyze. All right. So this is just, just a quick understanding on uh, what artificial intelligence is and where can you apply it to. All right. There's many, many more technologies that we can go through as well, especially what we saw through the Gartner Hype Cycle. You can easily just apply some of those skill sets into your environment and you can reuse those skill sets, of course, to venture into a field of IT as well. All right. So, yeah, uh, we managed to learn quite a lot about artificial intelligence. Hopefully, all of these are uh, useful for everyone here. For those who are new towards IT environment as well, yes, this may be some place you can look at. So from our side, InfoSight, of course, InfoSight, we are a training company. So if anyone would like to learn further about all of this, whether it's regarding AI, regarding big data, or even just uh, from what we mentioned earlier, you have programming, yeah, you want to learn about uh, operating system, you want to learn about server engineer, storage engineer, do give us, a, just do drop us an email or just feel free to contact us as well. Of course, our sales personnel or our internal team will get back to you to let you know about more, more details regarding anything that you require. Right. If not, feel free to visit our web page as well, www.infosite.com. Here you can get to the link of our Facebook page, our Instagram page, LinkedIn, and as well, YouTube page as well. We do have some short videos uh, connecting some small training. That might be a good starting point to look at, oh, what are the items that I can venture into or what small item I can learn about to kickstart my IT career here. All right. So that's all of uh, introduction from our side. I'll pass this time back to Sky. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.